everyone and welcome to another episode of the Simple Knit Podcast. My name is Eleanor and you can find me on Instagram as Simple Knit Co and here on YouTube where I hang out and share with you all the things that I have recently been knitting. Um, if this is your first time checking out the podcast, welcome along. It's lovely to meet you and um, a big hello to all of my returning viewers. It's really lovely to see you again. And yeah, I hope you're all keeping safe and well. It's a beautiful Sunday morning here in Brisbane, Australia, where I live. And I'm just here to talk about talk about what I've been making. So pour yourself a drink. I've got a coffee. And yeah, let's let's chat some knitting because I have I've been a busy bee in the last couple of weeks. It's not been that long since I last uh, posted an episode, but I actually have quite a few things to show you today. So uh, let's just get started. So um, the first finished object that I have is actually what I'm wearing today. So this is a my beach tank um, that was a work in progress last time. Um, so this is a pattern by Jess Schreibstein. I have made it before, twice before actually, this is the third time I've made it and all three times I've used the same yarn which is um, Tina Tape by Wool and the Gang. This colorway is called Moss Green and I love it. It is this beautiful shade of like a really goldeny kind of green, it has that kind of like lightly kind of pond scum toxic waste vibe but I think it's really pretty. And I realized when I was working on this, it's actually exactly the same color as the covers that I have on my chairs in my living room. So uh, I think I think I like this color a little bit. <laughs> I think it suits me as well. Um, but yeah, so ooh, fly, just a little um, buzzy co-host today. <laughs> um, so yes, I love I love this pattern as like, and I think it works really well with this yarn. Obviously, I've made it a few times. Um, let me just get up on my knees so you can see it a little bit better. Oh, it's all grace and dignity here. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what it looks like. I'm really happy with the length. Um, so these are my favorite jeans. Uh, they're Topshop mum jeans, if anyone's interested. Um, they're my favorite jeans. I just have, my jeans wardrobe is just multiple pairs of these. Um, but yeah, so they're high-waisted jean and just this tank top is kind of the perfect length over the top. Um, and yeah, I think it's fitting really well and it looks really, looks really good. Um, so this time, sit, sit then talk. Uh, this time I basically actually knit it almost exactly to pattern, which I haven't done the last two times I've made it. The first one I made was in a coral color and I knit the eye cord straps a bit longer. So it's like, um, sits more about here. Um, and then the second one I made was a navy blue one and I did the shoulder straps as little bows. Um, this time I, the only thing, modification I think I made was I didn't measure the initial one by one rib at the bottom. Um, I didn't measure that, I just kind of eyeballed it. Um, I think I was probably working on this out and about somewhere and I just did the one by one rib until it looked right and then transitioned into the stockinette. Um, but I'm really happy with how it's turned out. Um, I went down a needle size for the tubular cast on, which I didn't do last time, which um, I highly recommend doing it. So it's really good if you use a technique to do it properly. Um, and I think, yeah, I'm really just really stoked. I think it's really pretty. Um, it's still real hot here. It's allegedly, like the beginning of March is allegedly the start of autumn, but it's still really hot and really humid here. So I will be getting quite a bit of wear out of this. And I think even, um, in the winter time like with a jacket over the top it'll be really cute as well but yes that is my first finished object that i am thrilled about oh and i knit the size large it's the second to largest size that's the only thing with this pattern there aren't very many sizes but it's pretty simple so um i think it wouldn't be very hard even if you wanted to use a different weight of yarn to um just knit a swatch and go from there because it's a pretty simple pattern. But anyway, yes, that's my beach tank. So the next finished object I have is kind of a two in one because I was midway through one of these shawls or nearly finished. 
I think I was nearly finished one of these shawls in the last episode and now I have two finished shawls. So let's start with um, the one I was working on last time. So this is the um, Squishy Shawlette by Bronte Swanick. It is a really pretty, um, just little quick shawl pattern. And there is two sizes and it's basically the same shawl but you either knit it with a fingering or a worsted weight yarn. So this is my first one. This is one I knit for myself. You can see the size there. It's still a pretty, it's a pretty decent size in my opinion. Um, still pretty big. So this is um, knit in the Fibre Company's Road to China Light in the Hematite colorway. Um, I used this yarn for a jumper a couple of years ago and I had a couple of skeins left because my gauge was off. Um, and yeah, it is a very, very luxe yarn. So this is a blend of baby alpaca, camel, cashmere and silk. So it is insanely drapey and very, very luxe. And so obviously I had some left over and I didn't want it to just languish in my stash because it's such beautiful yarn. And it is technically a sport weight, but it worked really well in this fingering weight pattern. So I really love the size of this little shawl. It's a great size, oops, excuse me, to kind of put over your shoulders and it just sits there if you just need a little bit of extra warmth. Or then I also like to wear it, obviously not with this outfit, but just tying it around my neck like that. So it's just like a little little neck warmer and I think it is so so cute. So this pattern is just such a beautiful easy relaxed knit. I love the shape. I love the little spine down the center that the increases create and I love the light drape of this fabric. So the um, fingering weight shawl size which is this one is knit on a six millimeter needle so as you can see it just makes the lightest most transparent kind of fabric. I think it's great for any sort of yarn that has a lot of drape anyway. It's just it's just so lovely. So this um, the only mod I made was I did a couple of extra rows of ribbing so mine is like this one's actually slightly bigger probably. Um, I just did, kept doing the ribbing for a little bit longer because I just I really I just didn't want to stop I was having so much fun knitting um, and yeah it is I did a knit two together cast off which actually looks really good normally I don't like the way it's got more of a functional cast off than an aesthetic one but I actually really like the way that that cast off looks with this shawl. I don't know if this is helping or showing you anything. I just think it looks really good. Um, but yes, yeah, so that is Squishy Shawlette number one. And so I'd finished this, I think, honestly, I finished it while I was editing last podcast episode. And I had gone out to the movies with my mum and I was wearing it. And she said, oh, that would be perfect for your auntie. Just a little thing to put over her shoulders, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, okay. I'll make, I'll make her one. Um, I could have got the pattern for my mum and got some yarn, but then it might have been a slightly longer enterprise. My mum is actually going down to visit my auntie next week. So I, squishy shawlette number two, too fast, too squishy. That's a joke I make all the time about sequels that I don't think anyone finds funny but me. Um, so hit me up in the comments if you think that's funny because I make that joke at least once a week. <laughs> so anyway, I had have had this yarn as well in my stash for a really long time. It is Stress Knits yarn. It is her singles in the colorway Eliza and it's so pretty, but it's just not me. So it it's just I'm not going to I'm not going to wear this. I'm not going to wear this in anything and it's a single I don't love singles. I kind of you know, you have to try everything to see if a yarn is something that you enjoy, but I just don't, I just don't like it. Like I'm not gonna, it's not what I would gravitate towards personally. Um, which is like, oh, uh, fingering weight, single ply merino, sorry, to, if that wasn't clear, I can't assume that everyone knows everything, Eleanor. Um, but anyway, so like not my favorite yarn base, beautiful colors, but just a bit too soft. For me, I either like kind of neutrals or quite bright colours. Um, so it's just a little bit soft. 
but my auntie these kind of watercolory soft shades are right up her street and um, so I pulled it out wound it up and once again in like a week cranked out another little squishy shawlette so this one is basically as nature intended um, as the pattern intended so it's a fingering weight yarn knit exactly to pattern and yeah this is this pattern is awesome for a gift knit um, both of these shawls like each one took me less than a week to knit and I wasn't like a bit I was working on other things at the same time like I finished this top I have another thing to show you as well so it wasn't the only thing I was knitting I wasn't like burning the midnight oil to get it done in a week it was a really easy relaxed knit um, it's simple enough that you don't need to be tied to the pattern and you can kind of take it around with you it's because it's a just a stockinette and then one by one rib you can like work on it out and about you don't need to be using your whole brain I think I did quite a bit of this like on when I was chatting to friends on the phone and stuff so it is definitely a great gift knitting pattern as well and I think it's just so lovely so I just hold up a bit closer so you can appreciate um, once again I did everything is recommended I knit this on the six millimeter needle as well so you can see kind of how light the fabric is and the single ply merino is super drapey so there was even like some breaks in the yarn and I actually even though it was a, it's a really loose gauge oh so it is a loose gauge and there were a couple of little breaks in the yarn so I was a little bit worried about weaving those ends in and that they would be visible but like I'm having to actually kind of hunt for them if I sit and stare at the back for a long time I can find them but they're really not obvious maybe they are to you don't say anything if they are so even though it's a really like light loose gauge I was still able to like weave in some ends and stuff quite invisibly which is which is good which is good it looks great I hopefully my well my auntie has to like it because I made it for her so she has to appreciate it and this will be going on a little adventure to her house um this coming week um so yeah I am loving that I can definitely see myself knitting more of those shawls they're so quick and easy and they don't take very much yarn like this would took I think I haven't actually done my weighing but this is I would say less maybe maybe half a skein so maybe 50 grams of fingering weight yarn um, so if you have like leftovers from something or just a special skein in your stash that you're not quite sure what to do with you could even if you had like a few different leftovers you could make a striped one which I think would be super cute I also know that um, Melanie from the cozy cardigans podcast and big little yarn co fame she has made one um, like half and half so she used two different colorways like one on this side and one on that side and then I'm um, just alternated down the middle to keep it secure but yeah if you just had like a little bit of two colorways you could do a color blocked or a stripe um, but I think that would be really cute as well so yeah it's a really great stash buster really great gift knit Bronte is a delight so just buy her patterns anyway um, so those are my two squishy shawlettes maybe I'll give myself a tiny break before I knit another one because I do have a few bits and bobs of yarn in my stash that I think I could use to make some shawls um, so that is all my finished objects. I feel like I'm talking like a freight train today. I've actually had a really, um, a really quite, sorry, I'm just getting a funny message down on my phone. I really should put it on airplane when I film. Um, I had a kind of quiet weekend. I've, I don't know if anyone else has had a really busy start to the year. Um, I'm sure it's different in different places of the world as well. Um, we're very fortunate that we have quite a lot of freedom in Australia and Queensland at the moment. We do have one COVID doctor who, um, oh, so a doctor has got COVID. So everyone's a little bit um, on a, li a little bit on edge uh, this weekend, but there doesn't seem to be any um, community transmission at this stage, which is good. It does mean, I mean, I was thinking this morning actually, like I remember early COVID days like you would kind of structure your life around the press conferences every day where you would be getting your updates and your details even earlier this year when we had an, um, a case and a lockdown like 
planning your day around sitting still and listening to the uh, press conference. This morning I just watched the press conference while I had like it was on while I was having my shower so I just had it on in the background um, that it's just kind of become part of life now it's just part of how we do things um, so yeah but so the point to that weird rambling anecdote was um, because we are quite free, I've had quite a busy start to the year, but this weekend it's been a little bit more quiet, a little bit more just, I call them like Eleanor weekends where I don't really do very much and I just potter around and go up my own schedule. But that has meant I haven't really talked to many people this weekend. So sitting down to talk to you for 20 minutes means I am very chatty. You're welcome. I mean, that's one of the fun things about recording these videos. Otherwise, I would just be having these conversations with myself in the mirror. So at least I can think about the fact that someone is watching this and will say hello in the comments so I don't feel quite as weird. Anyway, I have one work in, work in progress to share with you, which is actually like almost finished. So. This is another one of Bronte's patterns, um, the designer of the squishy shawlette. Um, I really like Bronte and I really like all of her patterns and I've never knit any of her patterns before so I've kind of overcompensated by going a bit fangirly but um, I have here a project that I started this week. I should really call this the season 14 of Criminal Minds vest um, because I have no self-control and season 14 of Criminal Minds is on Disney Plus Star so I've watched the whole season already because that show I just can't stop. It's next episode yes please I don't care that it's one o'clock in the morning. Um, so this is her Lorelei vest. Um, it is a um, bulky weight vest pattern. I'm just realizing I'm looking on the camera you can't see. The, my yarn choice is interesting. Um, my yarn choice is making it hard for you to see is what I should say. Um, it is a, yeah, kind of a cropped little stockinette vest um, designed just to be a little layering piece in bulky weight yarn. Actually, I think the two samples that Bronte knit, she held a bulky weight with a lace weight um, mohair silk, but kind of at a bulky weight gauge. So I had a, I was kind of, I. I've liked this pattern since Bronte released it and I wasn't really sure though what I wanted to make it out of but then a uh, kit me uh, a wave of inspiration and what I have done I actually specifically ordered this yarn I have yarn for a bunch of other stuff I want to knit but sometimes you just have to go with your instinct um, so I'm knitting this out of Bendigo Woolen Mills Luxury 8 ply and 4 ply so to create a bulky weight I because a bulky weight is um, Australian yarn classifications go in plies, even though just because something is a four ply yarn doesn't mean the yarn actually has four plies, it just means it's a fingering weight, <laughs> which is confusing, but it makes it easy to do yarn substitutions because like, a bulky weight is like a 12 ply, so I just have to make the other plies add up to about 12. So a fingering weight is a four ply, a DK is an eight ply, I can combine them to make a 12 ply or a bulky weight. So I'm using Bendigo Woolen Mills Luxury 8 Ply and Luxury 4 Ply. The 8 Ply is black. It's a black DK weight yarn. It's 100% wool. And the um, 4 Ply is Frost, which um, is just a pure white. I wasn't quite sure because you know how screens and colours can be. Um, if this was going to be a... Uh, I went for the frost because frost sounds like a cool toned colour and if it was off white I wanted it to be more of a grey, like a cool toned off white than a warm off white but it's just white. So that's actually what I wanted but you can't, you can never be too sure. Uh, Bendigo Woolen Mills, they sell their yarn in these massive, like I've knit almost a whole garment look at the size of this, this is the first one, a massive um, 200 gram cakes. Um, so and they're really it's a really affordable um australian yarn so if you're in australia i highly recommend they're beautiful the yarns are great quality um a really wide range of like um really wide range of solid colors and 
like just a really great like hard wearing even the um the luxury one is super soft but feels really sturdy so um really great garment yarns highly recommend um bendigo woolen mills but anyway so i'm holding the black dk with the white fingering to create this mild effect that has come out so well i wanted it to be mild but i did want it to um be more predominantly dark than light so I, that's why i went for the black yarn in the heavier weight and i'm so stoked with how this has turned out so i'm knitting the size four on the recommended needle size which is an eight millimeter needle so it has worked up so quickly i think i started this on tuesday and it's sunday and i'm almost up to where i'm doing the ribbing then i just have to put some ribbing around the neck and the armholes and i'm done um so i'm i love it i think it's so cute you start from the top down um there's not really nothing to say other than this is a really another really great simple intuitive pattern i think this would be an awesome first garment pattern if you've never knit a garment before or if you're kind of a baby knitter looking to knit something a bit bigger because it is at a really nice big gauge with a nice big yarn big needles it works up really quickly so it's a very you get a whole garment quite quickly um also the shaping is really like really simple shaping um not really any seaming I think it would yeah a really fantastic first garment pattern so if there is a newbie knitter in your life um, I would definitely recommend this pattern to them or if you just want that kind of quick satisfying project and it will be such a cute piece when it's done I think for um, with a collared shirt under it it could look quite profesh with a little skivvy under it in the winter it will look really cute um, under jackets, over jeans and high-waisted skirts, which is all I wear. <laughs> I actually have a black, like, A-line mini skirt that I like tights, boots, that a skivvy, and this will be adorable in the winter. So that is the Lorelei Vest by Bronte Swanick. Um, the only mod I have made is I am lengthening the body a bit, um, because Bronte, I know, is a little pixie. She's not very tall. So I'm lengthening the body a bit just so it will be a comparable length actually i'm using this tank top as a guide it'll be a comparable length i think to this tank top when it's done it'll be close enough and i can always because this is 100 percent wool i can always block as required but yeah that's what i've been working on this week and so yeah i i don't feel like i've been i have been knitting a lot but i don't feel like i have been burning my life down to do knitting um, which is really nice because that's what I like. I just, I like to knit. <laughs> is that a surprise? I enjoy knitting and it's just really good to be getting so much, um, joy and satisfaction from my hobby. Um, yeah. What are you knitting? Tell me in the comments below. I'd love to hear. Um, yeah, I don't think I have anything else to share with you. Oh, there's one thing I've been meaning to say, like talk about the last few podcast episodes. Um, Jess of the sweater collective she is an Australian knitwear designer and she has recently started a podcast and it is excellent so um, I've knit a few of Jess's patterns before as some of her shawl I've definitely knit one shawl and one sock pattern of hers in the past her patterns are fantastic I love her her vibe her aesthetic is really lovely so she has she's had a YouTube channel for a while that used to just kind of have some tutorial videos but she's making a lot of video really really great video content um, so she has a podcast where she talks about you get that kind of um, behind the scenes of her design process which I find so fascinating as a non designer I've no desire to design knitwear I'm more than happy for much smarter more creative people than me to do that work and I will pay you for it that is I'm more that I have no desire to be a designer um but they're probably my favorite podcasts some of my favorite podcasts to watch are those of knitwear designers so like I love Sari Nordland's podcast I love Audrey of Yarn Flakes's podcast and um I'm loving Jess's podcast seeing the kind of behind the scenes workings of um of her design process she also does tutorial videos and um, sometimes if she's doing something like 
unraveling a garment or doing a new technique she'll make videos for that as well so there's a whole bunch of really interesting content over on her channel I'll link it down below and I highly recommend you check it out um yeah I'm really stoked for her and it's, she's making really high quality great content that's really interesting and her designs are great too so I highly recommend checking that out because if you're watching this podcast you're probably interested in knitting podcasts so yeah, I highly recommend checking out Jess's channel as well. But I think that's about all I have to chat to you about today. As I said, leave me a comment below. Let me know what you're working on, what you're excited about. If you have any podcast recommendations, people that you're enjoying watching at the moment, definitely leave them down below as well so we can all share in the, share in the fun. Um, I hope you're all keeping safe and well and I will catch you in the next episode. Bye.